I want to say happy Sabbath to everybody that's here. Praise the Lord that we was here to come serve him on his day. This is the Lord's day, the Lord's Sabbath day. This is the day that he commanded you to serve him and worship him on. He says, six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day, he didn't put a name on it. He said the seventh day is the Sabbath day. Man put the names on the days. So we have to be careful that we're not following man's, man's days and we're following the Lord's days. A lot of this stuff we was raised up on, but all you got to do is just do your research. We got everything at our fingertips right now. And we won't take advantage of it. You have no excuse. No excuse. So we definitely need to take advantage of it. Get in our books and read it. If we don't understand what we're reading, we need to call somebody up and get some understanding on what we read. Some things you don't take for face value because your salvation is on the line. So we're going to go ahead and get started with reading the commandments, which is read every Sabbath day in the churches. And the first place we're going to is, is Exodus, the 20th chapter. So please bend your Bibles to Exodus, the 20th chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 17. Exodus, the 20th chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 17. When you get it, my brother, please read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now, if you would, please turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. When you get it, my brother, please read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, let's turn to the last book of the Bible and the last chapter. Revelation, the 22nd chapter, and we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Revelation the 22nd chapter, and we're going to read verses 14 and 15. When you get it, my brother, please read. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. We just read the keys to salvation, the keys to eternal life. And again, they were read every Sabbath day 
in the churches. And you can read that in Acts the 13th chapter, verse 27, and Acts the 15th chapter, verse 21. So those are the keys to salvation. If you simply keep God's commandments, you will gain eternal life. And again, that was the book of Revelations, the 22nd chapter, the last chapter, and it's telling you, you are blessed if you keep the commandments. So you can't throw God's law away. And throwing God's law away is why we're going through some of the things that we're going through this day, even today. So that even ties into this lesson. And the title of today's lesson is Provoke Not the Lord, Neither Thy Neighbor to Anger. Provoke not the Lord, neither thy neighbor to anger. And again, all of that goes back into keeping God's commandments. Because if he tell you, if you love him, and if you love thy neighbor, you have fulfilled the law. So now, I want to read off some, uh, some statistics. And these statistics come from uh, a source called Birmingham Wiki. And it says, and this is talking about the city of Birmingham, just, just the city of Birmingham, not the state. It said 144 homicides have been reported in the city as of December the 21st, putting the city on pace for 148 for the year. Based on the 2022 census, Estimated of 196,910 population that represents a homicide rate of 75.2 homicides per 100,000 residents. So that's how they come up with the statistics to say that you are what they like to say the murder capital or something like that because it goes by numbers per the number of people that were killed. So that's how they come up with their statistics. Then it said Birmingham had 153 homicides in 2022, a record high. The recent record low of 62 homicides were set in 2014. At this point in 2022, 149 homicides have been reported. So now, let's look at some of these homicides. It said two killings arose from work-related disputes. It said five came during robberies. 15 were domestic related disputes. 17 resulted from arguments between acquaintances. 40 appeared to have been targeted assaults. One was caused by child abuse. One began as a dispute over a restaurant bill. One victim was struck by return fire during an assault and two by stray bullets during disputes. So when we see all of these, the reasons why they happen, they all line with the commandments. Keeping God's commandments. So that's why I say if you keep the commandments and follow them, you shall have eternal life. It's just that simple. So let's take a, a, a dive into this lesson. And the first place we're going to is, is Colossians, the third chapter. And we're going to read verses 18 to 21. Colossians 3. And we're going to read verses 18 to 21. Because there's some things that we got to look at that this word of God says that we got to do or we got to do better at. So Colossians, the third chapter. Give me verse 18 when you get it, my brother. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Okay, so hold right there. We see it said, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Not nobody else, you're supposed to be submissive to your husband. And if you're not married, you're supposed to be submissive to the Lord. But 
walking in his laws, statutes, and commandments. You should be a true servant to the Lord because now you don't have a commitment to a husband. Now you can get out there and really do the work as a true servant of God. And you don't have no bounds to, know, to, to the house that you got to get back home and I got to cook for him, I got to do this, I got to do that. All your service is to the Lord. Read that verse 19 again. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. So husbands, look, we got a role we got to play too. We got to love our wives and we can't be bitter towards them. Read. 20. Children, obey your parents in all things. So look at that. Even the children that's in here, we have to obey our parents in all things. Even though some of us are grown, we still can't disrespect our parents. Read that. For this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. So look at that. Look what it said. This is well-pleasing to the Lord. It ain't well-pleasing to me. It's well-pleasing to the Lord. Sometimes you have to overlook some things. Say, okay, mama, okay, daddy, but you still can't disrespect them. Read that. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Yes. Lest they be discouraged. That's big. So we have to be careful how we handle our little ones, how we handle our children, those that are under the age of 20. We have to be careful how we handle them because we don't want to discourage them to the point that they despise coming to church. To the point that they don't even want to be around you. So we have to be careful how we treat our children. So one thing I did forget, this is the Israel of God Bible study class and my name is Brother Jeff. And I'm a teacher here at the Israel of God and reading for me is Brother Alex. So forgive me for not introducing us. So let's move forward. Let's go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And we're going to read verses one through four. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And we're going to read verses one through four. And this is what we do. We go through this Bible, line upon line, precept upon precepts. We're going to go here a little and there a little. May, like, may, may seem like a lot of scriptures to you, but hey, this is what we're here for. We're here for the word of God. We ain't here for nothing else. You're here for something else. You're in the wrong place. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and we're going to read verses one through four. So fathers, this is what we're supposed to do. We need to make sure this is what we're doing. Read that. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Yes. For this is right. So now, starting back off again, let the children know to obey your parents. For this is right. Again, it's right in the sight of the Lord. Read that. Honor thy father and mother. Yes. Which is the first commandment with promise. So look at that. That is a commandment with a promise. Read it, I'll read the promise. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. So look what he promised you. If you simply obey your parents, he promised you long life on this earth just by simply obeying your parents. So that's something even us adults may need to take a look at too. Make sure we're not disrespecting our parents. Read that. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Yes. But bring them up in the nurture and ammunition of the Lord. Yes. So what it says, it said, make sure that we what? Not bringing our, provoke our children to wrath. So we can't provoke them to anger either. We got to be careful. And what we say to them. Because we are the adult in the situation. And it says what? It said bring them up in the nurture and ammunition of the Lord. So let's look at that ammunition. It's a warning. It's a counsel. So we got to warn them what? Warn them first of all about God. 
and if you're not obedient to his word, what he will do to you. We got to warn them to keep his commandments. Because if you don't keep his commandments, man got something for you. And God got something for you. God got the lake of fire for you. Man got jail. So we got to warn them. So now let's go to the next place. Let's go to Deuteronomy in the fifth chapter. Deuteronomy 5. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 16. Deuteronomy in the fifth chapter. So what we got to understand when we in this Bible, you see what is called an Old Testament and you see what is called a New Testament. But what it is, is what we're reading in the Old, it's the scriptures. It's what is written. Now we in the book of the law. And this law was established with God giving this to his people to obey. So when you start a nation or a group of people, you have to give them laws and statutes to obey. Even when a city starts, what does a city do? A city sets its laws and its statutes to govern the people, telling you what you can and what you can't do. You can't have this kind of dog. You can't have loud music at a certain time. They set their laws and statutes. So God has his laws and statutes set. So what kind of God would he be if he don't have any laws? It don't make sense. So this is when he established, <clears throat> excuse me, established his laws with the people. Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, give me verse 16 now. Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So we see that this was one of the things that was established in the book of the law. So your first five books is called the books of the law. So he established that with Israel to honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon this earth. So that's not just something that just popped up in the new. That's something that already God had already established with his people to obey your parents. So now, think about that now. We talking, when we talking about parents, now we talking about us. But we got to realize that we have a father. We have a heavenly father. So if we look for our kids to obey us, shouldn't we obey our heavenly father? Let's go to Exodus the 34th chapter. Exodus 34. And we're going to read one verse again. Verse 14. Exodus 34. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 14. So I want you to think about this. You have to look at this from two standpoints. You have to look at this from a standpoint of being a child, provoking your parents, making your parents mad, and you have to look at it from the standpoint of is that we are the bride, and God is the groom. So when you're looking at it from that standpoint, if you're the bride and you cheat on the groom, what are you doing? You provoking him to what? You provoking him to jealousy. So let's read it. Let's let the book talk. Exodus, the 34th chapter, give me verse 14. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. So he told you Jealous is his name. That's his name. So if we were created in the likeness of our God, y'all would have seen a jealous woman. Y'all would have seen a jealous man, what a jealous woman and a jealous man would do. 
So what you think your God gonna do to you when you disobedient to him? Come on, let's make it make sense. We want to agree with that sister. Yeah, sister, you should have busted this woman out. Yeah, you should have flattened this tire. Yeah, you should have did this. He shouldn't have did that to you. But what about when God do it to you because you provoked him to anger? Hello? So we got to look at it both ways. So that should be enough to scare you, to straighten you up. If I see it through me, through my eyes, that I don't want nobody to, to provoke me to jealousy, I should provoke my God to jealousy by serving other gods, by serving the God of Christmas. Because again, how do Santa Claus know when you sleeping, know when you awake, know when you have been bad or good? Only God knows that. He ain't no God. Let's move forward. We're going to look at this in the new. Let's go to Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans 10. And we're going to read verses 13 through 21. Romans, the 10th chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 through 21. So since you want to provoke him to jealousy by serving other gods, by serving that Sunday God, hate to break the news, but he gave you the seventh day, the Sabbath day, to worship him. Yeah, you worship him all the other days of the week, but he gave you one day to have a holy convocation, a holy gathering. He gave you this day. And we can read that in Genesis and go all the way through the book and read it. He did it, not me. He told you he created the Sabbath for man. Romans the 10th chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 through 21. When you get it, my brother, please read. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Yes. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Yes. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Yes. So we see that verse 13 said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. But then he gives you some things to go with it. That's right. So you just can't say, Jesus. I love you and don't have no actions behind it. Because he said, how, how then shall they call, call on him in whom they have not believed? That's big. That's big. Because if you don't believe what's written in this book and you're going doing what somebody else told you to do, then you don't believe in him. It's just that simple. What the next part I say, Al? I'm and trying to read and teach. Read. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So if you have not heard of this Jesus of the Bible, then how are you going to believe on him? You say you done heard of him. You say you got this Bible. You say you read it. You say you use it. But are you walking in it? Or are you walking in that other Jesus that the Bible talk about? Read. And how shall they hear without a preacher? So now you got to have a preacher that's going to be preaching out of this Bible, not preaching out the thoughts of his own mind. It got to come out of this book. He can't just read one verse and close it up and then just talk to you the rest of the time. He got to be coming out of this book because what I think don't matter. My thoughts don't matter. My thoughts can't get you into the kingdom. I can't put you in the lake of fire and I can't put you in the kingdom of God. Your actions, you. Where we at, Al? Verse 15. Read. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Oh boy, go ahead. As it is written, 
How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Go ahead. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Uh -huh. For Isaiah said, Lord, who have believed our report? Yes, sir, and that is big. Who have believed our report? He's talking about the report that the prophets has came out and has spoken all the way up. You coming all the way up, even from Moses, all the way up to now, to, the, to John. The report that they spoke, who believes it? You believe it by your actions. It should be a full house in here. Should be a full house. Read out. So then faith cometh by hearing. Where faith come by? By hearing. And what? And hearing by the word of God. Yes, and hearing by the what? Word of God. Not hearing by the words of my mouth or the words that come off the top of my head. It's by the words of God. Read. But I say, have they not heard? Huh? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth. Yes. And their words unto the ends of the world. Yes, so the, the words of the prophets went out to all the ends of the earth. But did they hear them? Read. But I say, did not Israel know? Whoa, did Israel know? Did we not just come out of the book of the law reading when Moses was telling them that? He was telling Israel. God chose Israel. Read. First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. Yes. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. Sure will. Go ahead. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I, will I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Go ahead. But to Israel he saith, all day long have I stretched forth my hands into a disobedient and gangsang people. Yes, sir. So we see where he, we saw where he was giving that word to Israel. But he said they was a stiff-necked people. They did not hear what he had to say. So guess what he did? He provoked them to anger with a nation that was not a nation of people. And we are being provoked to anger with this people until this day. Still, and we don't even know it. We don't even know it. And that nation of people that he's provoking you with is the Gentile, what we call the white man. And he provoked you to anger with him each and every day. I got to go deal with this. I got to go deal with that. But he did it for a reason. Because we tried to say what? The word of God is only for us. We don't want to give it to no other nations of people. But the word of God was meant for everybody. Because when Israel came out of uh, Egypt, the stranger came out with him too. All nations of people. This word is for everybody. But we see our Hebrew brothers that they're going to tell you Israel only. Okay. Better get in this book and read it. And stop selective reading. You want to say everybody else is selective reading, but you're doing it too. Proverbs, the 20th chapter. Proverbs, the 20th chapter. And we're going to read one verse in here. Proverbs 20. And we're going to read one verse. Verse number two. So what we, what we read, fear God and keep the commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's what we read in Ecclesiastes 12. The fear of God. So let's read this Proverbs, this 20th chapter, verse 2. What does it say, Brother Al? The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion. Uh -huh. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. Whoa, so that lion, who do that lion he talking about? Jesus. He talking about that lion of Judah, Jesus. So read that again, Al. The fear of a king is as the roaring of a lion. Yes, go ahead. Whoso provoketh him to anger sinneth against his own soul. So when you provoke this God of Israel to anger, you sinning against your own soul. Your own body. 
Got to wake up and realize what we're doing. Let's move forward. Hebrews, the third chapter. We're going to read verses 14 through 19. Hebrews, the third chapter. And we're going to read verses 14 through 19. When you get it, my brother, please read. Because we're going to see right home, we're going to see right here that not all the people, all the people didn't provoke the Lord to anger. And it's Hebrews, the third chapter. So pay attention to the words. All the people back then in that time, when they came out of Egypt into the wilderness, all the people didn't provoke the Lord to anger. And we're going to see this. Read, Al. For we are made partakers of Christ. Uh -huh. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end, while it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, uh -huh. harden not your hearts, yes. as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Look at that. So it said, for some. It didn't say for all. It said for some. When they had heard, did, did provoke. provoke. Go ahead. How be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Uh -huh. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Yes. And to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. Go ahead. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Yes, because they kicked, screamed, they did everything that would murmur against the word of God that Moses was bringing to them from God. He led them out of Egypt. He was a pillar fire at night and a cloud in the daytime. And he led them out of Egypt, and they still went and did their own thing. Still went and built golden calves. They still went and did what they wanted to do. And we are the same people today. At the end of the day, when it's all over, said, and done, we're going to walk out these doors and do whatever we want to do. At the end of the day, better make sure you're serving the Lord. Make sure that you're doing what you want to do. Make sure that's serving the Lord. Now, Let's go to Numbers, the 14th chapter. Let's take a look at this, what we just read. Numbers 14. And we're going to read verses 27 through 35. Numbers, the 14th chapter. And we're going to read verses 27 through 35. Let's see who didn't. We're going to see the ones that didn't provoke the Lord to, in the wilderness. Numbers 14. Give me verse 27, Mal, when you get it. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmurs against me? Mm -hmm. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Yes. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Yes. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward. Yes, so this is what he was telling Moses to tell the people. He said, your carcasses shall fall in, in the, the wilderness, wilderness, and all that were numbered of you according to the whole number from 20 years old and upward. So that's showing you an age of what? An age of accountability. That you should be able to account for your sins. So if you are under that age of 20, according to what we read, you're not accountable for your sins yet. You need to still be in training. Your parents still should be training you and teaching you. Read out. Which have murmured against me. Uh -huh. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swore to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. Yes. But your little... Hold it right there. So those were the only two that was of the age 20 years and above. That was saved. 
everyone else. They went wandering in the wilderness until they died. Read. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. So look at that. He said your little ones, those that are under the age of 20, he going to bring them in the land that you despised because you walked around and you murmured and you kicked against the word of God. Read. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Go ahead. After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Yes. You broke the promise. You broke the agreement that you made with God. All, that, all the words that the Lord say we will do and be obedient. You broke that. So now he said he's going to make you wander around the wilderness for what? 40 years. Until you fall and die. Each and every one of you that murmured and kicked against my word except for Joshua and Caleb. What verse that was, Al? 34. Read 35. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Yes. So, and they all did die. Those that were 20 years old and above, because of what they do, they kicked against the word of God. So these are examples for us that we need to be obedient. So that's why it's important to be able to go back and read these things. Because if I just read that in Hebrews, I wouldn't understand what he was talking about if I only had a New Testament Bible or I'm, an, or I'm just a New Testament Christian and the Old Testament done away with. No, you need to go back there and read that instead of that to get the understanding of what actually happened. So now let's move forward. Let's go to Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Exodus 23, and we're going to read verses 20 to 22. So we're going to look at something else too. Not only do you, you don't want to provoke the Lord to anger, but you don't want to provoke his angel to anger as well. And he's going to tell you why. Exodus 23, give me verse 20. Wait a minute, I hear a few pages. I want everybody to read this so they won't say, that brother Jeff said that, uh, no, the book said it. I read it. <laughs> Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Give me verse 20, my brother. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Yeah, so it's going back to even what I said. He's, that angel is going to be, God followed you in that pillar of cloud at night and in the fire during the day, I mean the, the, the fire, pillar of fire at night and the cloud in the daytime. So he also had his angel with you as well to protect you, to lead you and guide you through the way. Read. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. So you see that right there? That said what, Al? Provoke him not. Provoke that angel not. What else? For he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Whoa. He will not pardon your transgressions. For what, Al? For my name is in him. One more time. For my name is what? My name is in him. Saying that to say, learning some on the way of learning some, when they tell you to be baptized, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Did he just not say his name is in that angel? That's who that Holy Ghost is. You better understand the Spirit of God comes in many forms. He tell you that the Word is Spirit and the Word is what? Life. God is the Spirit. And those that worship him must, must worship, worship him what? Spirit and in truth. 
The thoughts of your mind are spirit. You can't see them. The breath that you're breathing right now is spirit. Because he told you what? He was going to breathe into the nostrils the, the breath, breath of, of life, life and, and man, man became, became a living soul. soul. You better understand what the spirit is that this book is talking about. So that angel what? It's going to come in the name of Jesus. He said, my name is in him. Read. Verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice uh -huh. and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thy adversary. Yes. So it's simply obey, obey, obey. And he going to fight your battles for you. You ain't even got to ball your fists up. Let's move forward. Let's go to Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the second chapter. So that's why I said we got to get in this book and read, and we got to get some understanding. When you think you know something, that's when you're fooling yourself. And that's including me. Can't never get too comfortable in this word and cross your legs and sit back and pop over a can of beer. Or a poor glass of wine and say, I'm good. That's when you're in trouble. Jeremiah, the second chapter. And we're going to read verses 31 to 35. Jeremiah, the second chapter. And we're going to read verses 31 to 35. Because what we got to realize, Israel is the one. They talk the wicked ones that way. So, Jeremiah, the second chapter, we're going to read verses 31 to 35. When you get it, my brother, please read. O generation, see ye the words of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say my people, we are lords. We will not come no more unto thee. Can a maiden forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Uh -huh. Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Look at that. So he said his people has forgotten him days without number. Because we just saw where he was giving his people, Israel, the law, statutes, and commandments. And they have forgotten God. And they have turned to other gods, even gods of wood and stone to serve. Gods that cannot save them and has provoked them to anger even until this day. Where we at, Al? 33. Read. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones they, thy ways. So look at that. Even taught the wicked ones the bad ways to go against the Lord. You're supposed to have been teaching them right, you're supposed to have been teaching them commandments. Because he told you that you were are a kingdom of priests. Where we at, Al? 34. Read it. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. Look at that. Go ahead. I have not found it by secret search, but upon all these. So he didn't have to do a secret search. He see it. It's open. Your sins are open. Read. Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, Surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will. Oh, well, so we always want to claim innocence. what I do? That's why you had to take this mirror, which is this Bible, and you have to examine yourself. Because when I stand here or whatever brother stand behind this rostrum and teach, they're not judging you. If you're feeling bad, it's the word of God that judges you. And it's what's going to judge you at the end when you tell you the books was open and another book was open. It's going to be this Bible. It's, this is what's going to judge you. Whether you deem worthy or whether you deem righteous to enter into the kingdom or whether you lake a fire bound. Where we at, Al? I'm going to start 35 over. Read it over. Yet thou sayest, because I am innocent, Surely his anger shall turn from me. No way, go ahead. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest, 
I have not sinned. So trust me and believe me that that plea is not going to be no begging. Because we can go and read that. He said he's going to plead with Israel because it's to Israel first and then to the rest of the people because he gave the word to Israel first. And it's Israel's responsibility to give it to the rest of the world. But has Israel done their job? They haven't. Because the church is a sign that they haven't done their job. Because they will be in here now. So now let's go to Leviticus, the 19th chapter. Leviticus 19, and we're going to read verses 17 through 19. Leviticus, the 19th chapter, and we're going to read verses 17 through 19. So we're going to deal with loving thy neighbor. This is what it's all supposed to be about, is the love of your neighbor. Yeah, you're going to have people that's going to provoke you and push you, but the Bible tells you what? Be ye angry, but what? Sin not. Sin not. So sometimes you just got to walk away. Walk on by. Right, that's what we have to do sometimes. I know I have to do it. Because my mouth, thank you Jesus for, for, for taming my mouth because, whoo, I tell you. Leviticus 19, and we're going to read verses 17 to 19. When you get it, my brother, please read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Look at that. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. It ain't talking about that heart in your chest. That's simply a blood pump. Because you can have open heart surgery and you can have a heart transplant. So what you're trying to tell me is all the love and all the joy that I have in me when I get my heart get transplanted to somebody else they going to take all that? No. It's right here. It all, the whole ball game, everything is up here. Because once this stop working, think about it. You got people that's what called brain dead and vegetables. The heart still be, but they have no thoughts. They have no memories. They have nothing. They can't show you no love. They can't show you no hate. So it's all here. The mind, when he's talking about heart, he's talking about the inner man inside here. What we had again, Al? 17. Read, start, take it from the top. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Uh -huh. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow That's thy... That's good, Al. We done went into something else I ain't want to go into. That's good. 18 is all I want. 18 is all I want. But we see it said what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Then he said what? Call, I, I am, am the Lord. Lord. So we got to remember that. So let's go, since most folks, I ain't gonna say most folks, since some people have that little short Bible, <laughs> Matthew to Revelations, or they had a whole Bible, but they don't go back and read. We just saw that right there, said what? Love thy Amen. neighbor. As thyself. So let's read Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Go to Matthew 22. And we're going to read verses 35 through 40. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. And we're going to read verses 
35 through 40. And this dealing with loving your God and loving your neighbor. Because love is what? The fulfillment of the law. Matthew 22, we're going to read verses 35 through 40. I want everybody to have this. When you get it out, please read. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, yes. Master, which is the great commandment of the, in the law? He asked him, which is the great, the great commandment, commandment in, the in the law? Read. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. He's simply telling you to love him with all your being. Everything you do, with your members, which is your hands, your body, whatever it is, you remember the Lord and you love him. You show him love. By keeping the commandments, you're showing him love. Read. This is the first and great commandment. Yes. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes, because the book tell you, if you love me, keep my commandments. So that's showing him love. Read that verse 39 again, Al. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Did we not just read that? So Jesus was doing what? Quoting scripture that he gave. Read. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So look at that. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So you have some that will go and tell you that there's only two commandments now we got to keep. I was told that personally, so I know. So I said, where you get that from? So they brought me here. And then they brought, brought me to that verse. Read that verse again, Al. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Hang all, all the law and the prophets. So it's telling you all that the law says from, from, from one all the way down to ten, and then all what the prophets taught. All your prophets. So it's not saying it's just two commandments. Because the first four is what? Loving your God. And then when you look at the other six, they talk about loving your neighbor. That's what he's talking about. But if you don't read and study, you don't know this. What verse was that? That was it, Al? That was verse 40? Yes, sir. All right, let's move forward. Let's move on. Let's go to Ephesians, the 14th chapter. I mean, Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians 4. And we're going to read verses. 17 to 27. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. We're going to read verses 17 to 27. So we got to put off that what? That old man. The old way of thinking. That old mindset. We got to put it off. And we got to be renewed. When I tell you renewed in the spirit, we got to be renewed in the word. Renewed in the spirit, in the word, what we got up here. We got to throw away all that old garbage, and we got to replace it with the word of God. But then it's also going to tell you that what? You can be angry. You can get angry, but sin not. But let, let the book talk. Ephesians 4, give me verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds. Yes, and if you want to know who the Gentiles are, go to Genesis, the 10th chapter, and it'll tell you who the Gentiles are. Paul was teaching the Gentiles at that time. Read. Having the understanding darkened, 
being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Yes. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to walk, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Yes, go ahead. But ye have not so learned Christ. Uh -huh. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Yeah, so we see that it said that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. So them old thoughts and old conversations that you used to have that was against the word of God, you stop. It said, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the things that we used to want and the things that we used to do. You got to put that off. Read out. And being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Yes, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's, this is what the baptism is supposed to do. When you're baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. It washes away all those what? Past sins. So now you come out renewed in the spirit with a new mindset. Where we at, Al? 24. Read it. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Yes. Wherefore, putting all, putting away, lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Yes. So you putting away all those things away from you. So look at the key thing that is said that old. Lying. That's one thing I hate. Is a liar. Whoo. Man. It's a lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor. So you got to speak the truth to your neighbor. Sometimes the truth hurt. Sometimes it might just be best for you to be quiet. Stay out of folks' business. Then get what? You ain't got nothing to say. Because I ain't even know your dress was ripped in the back if I went around you to look. Sometimes you have to stay away, folks. I'm just being real, family. I'm just being real with you. Then you don't want to tell them the dress real up in the back. <laughs> that will be your sister. You let her know. Hey, sis. <laughs> Keep reading now. Where we at? 26. Keep reading. Be ye angry and sin not. Now look what go along with this. It tell you, be ye angry and what? Sin not. What else? Let not the sun go down, down upon your wrath. So you can't let the sun go down upon your wrath. You got to mean that. You got to fix that. In whatever way you can. Sometimes it just takes you to just say, good evening, good morning. And keep it moving. So now they're saying, well, I know he ain't mad at me because he ain't just walked by me and not speak. And then maybe to move on and move forward. But with that lying, you got to be man and woman to go back and apologize. And that's one thing about me. If you lied on me or whatever it may be, and then you continue to lie on me, and then you continue to lie on me again, I got a problem. But if you come to me and apologize and say, bro, Jeff, hey man, I'm sorry. I didn't understand this, or I didn't know this or that, whatever it may be, it's done. It's over with. It's for, I, I, I will say it's forgotten. I didn't put it in the back. I'm watching you, but I didn't put it in the back. That's done away with, it's over. So that's what we got to realize, even with our brothers and sisters. Sometimes we cross them. Sometimes I cross people. But hey, I got to remember to apologize. Hey, bro, he says, if I said anything wrong to hurt you or harm you, I'm sorry. Because what the book say? Forgive our trespass 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. We got to remember that. Where we at, Al? Verse 27. Read. Neither give place to the devil. Yes. So that's the key right there. Because if you hang on to that wrath, you're going to continue to think about it and think about it, and it's going to weigh you down, and you're going to want to put your hands on somebody, it's going to get on you, and you can't turn it loose. Now Satan had crept in. Yeah. When he walked back by him again, give him a piece of your mind. And that person that you're dealing with might be a person that if you give them a piece of your mind, then they're going to give you a piece of their mind, and then next thing you know, y'all the tank. Y'all run. So we have to be careful. Be mindful. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Let's go to our next place. Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans 12. See, these, this, this lesson right here, in these verses, they be for me. I'm telling you. Because everything I'm talking about, and some of these brothers in here know, <laughs> I went through it last week. So I have to remember this stuff. So when I walk by you, hey, how you doing? And then when you do like this, I'm good. I'm good. You got to deal with it. But you're not going to lie on me. I'm going to let you know. Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 17. Wait a minute, we just did that, didn't we? No, no, we didn't. Romans, the 17th chapter, I mean, Romans, the 12th chapter. We're going to read verses 17 to 21. Because I'm leading up to something. Romans 12, and we're going to read verses 17 to 21. So now remember when I said, I spoke to that person. And they walk by and turn their head and look up like something else going on over here. But it's a big old billboard right there, so you can't see nobody else and nothing else over there. I already know. Let's look what this say. Romans 12, verse 17. Now I'll get to it. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Uh -huh. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Yes. If it be possible. Now look at this, fam. If it be possible, what? As much as lieth in you. Ooh, Lord, if much as lies in me. Live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men. Like I said, sometimes it's just you speaking. Good morning, good evening. Hey, how y'all? If you, if you feel sometimes that, you know what? Right now, I, I'm getting there, but I ain't quite there yet. And there's somebody else in the room, how y'all doing today? So now you just, you, you, you did, you spoke to everybody. How y'all doing today? What else, Al? Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Yes. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will, I will repay, saith the Lord. So that's what I got to remember. That vengeance is the Lord. No matter how much I want to put my hands on somebody, no matter how much I want to cuss somebody out, whatever it may be, I have to realize my God can do it better than me. If I believe in it, and he just told me vengeance is mine, it's my office. Let me handle it. What he said, I will repay. Read. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, so feed now, him. if that brother or sister hunger, hey, I got a little something, I got a little something in my lunchbox if you if you want it. Got a couple of dollars on me if you want to get some out the vending machine. Go ahead. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Go ahead. If he thirsts, give him drink. So offer him a drink. Offer him a bottle of water. Even though it's free at work, but hey, give you a bottle of water. Go ahead. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. So now you heaping the coals of fire upon their heads. 
Here I am riding home from work, and there him, he or she is on the side of the, word, side of the road with a flat. What do I do? Do I say, ah, and keep riding? Or do I pull over and help? So it's, these are things right here that you have to ask yourself. Because if you don't, if you don't kill that wrath, this is what this is showing you. You'll keep on riding right by that joker. And then not, it, maybe you get up the road a little bit or a couple of days later, you end up in a situation and you need somebody to help you. So we have to be careful. That was it, Al, what was that? 21. Go ahead. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So it's telling you how to overcome evil. Again, if you don't get that wrath off you, evil is going to overcome you. But you got to overcome it. When you see it coming, you got to overcome it with the word of God. You got to get into this book or you got to talk to a brother or sister that can maybe calm you down. And I think the lower form that I got them, I got some, some bumpers I can bump into. And I can go in there and knock some paper down and talk crazy and hey man, okay, they laugh and they whatever and they calm me down. So I appreciate that. Let's go to our next place. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Matthew 5. So it's, I'm just letting you know, fam, that it, it's, it's nothing perfect about me. I got a lot of flaws. A lot of them. Matthew 5, and we're going to read verses 43 to 48. Matthew, the fifth chapter, and we're going to read verses 43 to 48. So, even so, we have to pray for our enemies as well. That's something that we got to see and that we got to realize and understand. Sometimes we had to pray to the Lord to give us strength to pray for our enemies. And we don't want to see, just like our Lord, he's long-suffering, he's merciful. He don't want to see nobody suffer, especially suffer the death of the lake of fire. So we should be the same way as well. If we are made in his likeness and in his image, and if we want to what? Become God? That might be a shocker to some, but hey. Keep coming to class and, and read your Bible. You'll see that that's what he created man for. He just created you just to be this or be that. He created you to be God. He gave man power and dominion even in the, in the beginning. He gave you power and dominion over the fish, over the animals on the land and everything. Why do you think a man could tame a tiger or a lion, make a dolphin jump through hoops, make a killer whale, be in the same water with the killer whale? And make him do tricks at SeaWorld. Because he gave man the power to be able to do so. To tame a, a, a venomous, one of the most dangerous snakes that is on the world. To be able to tame him. So we have to know that. But it's more to come. It's more to come. It's more power than that. He even gave his disciples powers. And told them that he even gave them the power to what? To cast out devils. But we don't, hey, I don't know what we read. Jimmy the Cricket or something, I don't know what book we read. <laughs> Matthew 5, give me verse 43, Al. Ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Uh-huh. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, yes. and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Ooh, we. Jeff, man, I'm just being, listen family, I can only be as honest as I can be. That verse right there just slapped me across my face. It really did. It just slapped me across my face. 
And that's what the Word of God should do. It should correct you. It should be a reprove and reproof. It should line you, line you back up in how to walk. Because I got to deal with this person next week. I got eight hours with them. It is what it is. So this right here telling me what I got to do. I don't need to hear from Al. I don't need to hear from Drake. The Lord just told me. Woo. Where we at, Al? 45. Read it. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Mm. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Yes, Lord. Where we at, Al? 46. Read it. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Mm. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. I only have to say nothing on this. should be self-explanatory. Read out. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We have to take heed to this word. Yes. If not, we serving the Lord in vain for nothing. We serving him for nothing. Like I said, this word, this sword, which is the word, it cuts both ways. It cuts the teacher and it cuts those to listen. Hopefully it cuts you enough to where it changes your actions. That, whoo, I don't want to get up on that blade no more. You know how when you cut, you say, how? You jump back. So now you handle that knife a little differently. You handle, if you get burned, you handle that fire a little different. Like me, I don't fry, fry food no more because I've been burned by hot grease. So I don't, I don't deal with fried foods. I don't fry no foods no more. I use air fry. <laughs> Let's move on. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 12. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 12. So we're going to look at loving one another, brotherly love, and defraud not your brother. Because the Lord, you know, we, I like comic books and stuff like that. My brother, he schooled me on a lot of stuff I don't know, dealing with the comic books. But the real Avenger is who? The Lord. The Lord. First Thessalonians 4, give me verse 1, my brother. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Yes. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Yes, so Paul just simply telling them, you know the commandments. Paul is teaching in Thessalonica, he's teaching the people. And he's giving them what thus says the Lord. He ain't giving them what thus says Paul. Paul don't have no book, which people try to give Paul a book. People try to give Paul his own words because they don't understand what Paul is saying. Peter even tell you that. Read. Verse 3, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Yes, go ahead. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Talking about this body here, this vessel. Read. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which knew not God. That's right. So they didn't know God, so it was Israel's job to teach them. So 
Paul is what now? The apostle to the Gentiles. Read. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner. Yes, in any manner, don't defraud your brother. Why? Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. Look at that. Ain't no Iron Man or no uh, Incredible Hook, which is my favorite character, by the way. But <laughs> it ain't none of them. It's the Lord. Read. As we also have forewarned you and testified. Go for, ahead. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Yes, go ahead. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God. Look at that. He's saying you despising God, not man. Read. Who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Go ahead. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. Go for on. ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Yes. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. Mm, powerful words. We didn't talk about that once before, telling you to study to be quiet. How do you study to be quiet? By what? Shutting your mouth. Watching your mouth. All right, Josh, go, <laughs> go ahead. I'm going to start at the top yeah. of 11 again. And that ye study to be quiet uh -huh. and to do your own business. Look at that. Do your own business. I can't do our business in my business because the ball going to get dropped somewhere. And nine times out of ten, it's going to get dropped on my side. Now my closet and bust open and everybody see what's going on with me because I'm too busy in Alex's business. Read. And to work with your own hands uh -huh. as we command you. Go ahead. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Look at that. So when you do those things, when you be quiet, handle your own business, and work with your own hands, what? He said that ye may walk honestly yes. toward them that are without that ye may have lack of nothing. nothing. He gonna make sure you have everything that you need so now you can help those that maybe are in need. Because you handling your business. First John, the second chapter. First John, the second chapter. And we're going to read verses 7 through 11. 1 John 2, and we're going to read verses 7 through 11. Oh, this is just simply talking about, again, this lesson is dealing with the love of your brother, the love of your neighbor. First John, the second chapter, and we're going to read verses 7 through 11. When you get it, my brother, please read. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye heard from the beginning. Yes. So what he's talking about, the old commandment, so now, again, if you're not reading what is called the Old Testament, you don't understand what he's saying. The commandments was given in the beginning. So you got to go back and read the commandments to understand what they say. Read that. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the truth light now shine. Yes, that's what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to come out of darkness and into the light. Read. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. Wow. You can't dwell in that light and you got hatred on your heart towards your brother, your sister. Don't work. They don't mix. Read. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light 
and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Yes, go ahead. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because the because that darkness has blinded his eyes. So look at that. You don't even know you're in darkness because your eyes are blind. Think about being in the darkness. You can't see where you're going, but that's bad when you're in it and you don't even recognize it. That just show you how fast that hatred can take over you if you let it, if you don't catch it before it manifests, before it grows. You got to catch it and you got to deal with it. You got to. That's why we got to stay in this word, stay in this Bible and read this book. Find like-minded brothers and sisters that want to read instead of this Bible. It's good, okay, to go out and shop and sit around laughing, talking, have a good time. But sometimes it's good to get in this word, too. I go down there with Al sometimes. Sometimes we got some good jazz on, some good music playing. We kick back and listen to the music. Sometimes I come in there, Al got his Bible open with the same jazz playing, and he reading the word. I said, what you reading, Al? I'm just going through something. You want me to read it? <laughs> now, hold up. Let me get my phone out. He going he gonna, he gonna to make sure I'm getting some word while I'm at work. You want me to read it? Go ahead, bro. Then I walk down there with my other bro. He, in the <laughs> he down there laughing. So what's funny, bro? I would take a look at this some. Uh, pull your phone out. Go to da 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 then he started running some down to me. And I can't do nothing but just sit there and just be just like that, watching him walk back and forth. Watching him walk back and forth. What that, what that say? I love it. I love it. But I just look at that as that it's the Lord seeing me sometime. I'm in need of that word. And, and it be right on time, every time. It don't never feel like it's out of place. Oh, why are we going? Why, why we, no, it be right on time, right in place. And I appreciate that. Praise God. Let's move on. Let's go to Psalms, the second chapter. Y'all need verse 12. Oh, let me get verse 12. Oh, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> don't let me leave out now, please don't. No, that post stop at 11. Okay, okay. post stop at 11. Psalms 2, Psalms, the second chapter. We almost done, fam. We got five more to go after this, so just bear with me. Psalms, the second chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 12. Psalms, the second chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 12. That's that whole... Excuse me, chapter. Still hear some pages turn. I want everybody to, to be on this and read this. With fear and trembling, kings and judges on this earth, that we still have to deal with, then if we don't kindle his wrath. We don't want to do that. So we got to be careful that we don't frustrate our God with disobedience. That's the same way, like I said, we have to look at this from our standpoint. The same way that we don't want our kids doing the same thing. We have to look at it from that point. He is our father, our heavenly father. We know we have earthly fathers, but we have to give reverence to our heavenly father. That's the one we give reverence to, not reverence to a man, Reverence to what? God. Because what? Holy and reverence is whose name? Lord's it's name. his name. Psalms 2, give me verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Uh -huh. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their break cords. Their bands, uh -huh. Break their, their bands asunder and cast away their cords from, from us. Go ahead. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. 
the Lord shall have them in derision. So, the only way he going to laugh and have your enemy in derision is what? You being obedient to his word. He ain't got nothing for the person that's disobedient in his word. He probably sit back and laugh at you. Because you're going through it. You won't let the true and living God, what? Take vengeance on your enemies because you won't be obedient to his word. He just simply asking you to walk in his word. That's all. Verse 5. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Ooh, you don't want to be part of that day. Go ahead. Yet have I set my king upon the my holy hill of Zion. Yes, sir. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Wait a minute. Did it say the uttermost parts of heaven? The uttermost parts of the earth. That's future that's talking right there, fam. If, if, you, if you didn't know it. The meek shall inherit the earth. You ain't going to heaven. You ain't from heaven. He created man from the dirt of the ground. We can go in Genesis and read that. What we at, Al? Verse 9. Read it. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Yes. So that's talking about in the return of Jesus. What he's going to do here on earth. Because he got to clean this place up. He ain't coming here in this dirty like this. Again, go back and read your Old Testament. And he, when Israel kept being dirty and unclean and crossing him, he moved himself further and further away from them. He even told them to take the Ark of the Covenant, what? Outside the camp. Because when you had the Ark of the Covenant, that meant that God was with you. Where we at, Al? Verse 10. Read it. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Uh -huh. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Yes, sir. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. Go ahead. And ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Look at that. He said, if his wrath kindled just a little. That's talking about Jesus. Read. Blessed are thou. All they that put their trust in him. Read that again. They are blessed are who? Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Yes. yes. You got to put your trust in him. I love that song where they said, Jesus, in him I put my trust. <laughs> Y'all don't know it, go listen to it. That's an IOG song. I can't sing. That's why I ain't of him. But I love the song. I love to hear the choir sing. But you put your trust in Jesus. I know it. Go listen to it. We might play it. Might get Josh to cue that up. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Second Thessalonians, the third chapter. Second Thessalonians, the third chapter. And we're going to read verses 6 through 15. Second Thessalonians, the third chapter. And we're going to read verses 6 through 15. So what we're about to read is going to went along with what we just read in that Psalms. Make sure everybody there. <clears throat> Excuse me. 2 Thessalonians, the third chapter, and we're going to read verses 6 through 15. When you get it, my brother, please read. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, <laughs> and not after the tradition which he received of us. Yes, sir. So, hey, take heed. It's telling you. But it said that ye will draw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the traditions which 
he received of us. So it's talking about what the tradition that you receive from Paul them is what? The word of God. It ain't the traditions of men. It ain't talking about keeping December the 25th. It ain't talking about keeping Easter. It ain't talking about that. Because you don't read that in this Bible. It ain't in here. Why are you saying you love God and you serve the Lord, but you keeping something that's not in the Bible? Don't make sense. I know when I was keeping it, I wasn't walking in the word. I was not walking in his word. It's just that simple. Where we at, Al? Verse 7. Read it. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Uh -huh. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, yes. but wroth with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Yeah, so he, they said they ate no man's bread for naught. They took care of the apostles and the disciples because the Lord told them when they went out, when they went to a house, they told them, knock on the door and if they receive you. So when they receive you, they fed you, they took care of you. Think about it, even when the angels came, they took care of them. When they came even into what, lots and all them, they brought them in, they fed them, they ate. So that's what they did when a man of God came about. They fed them and said, you fed me physical food, I'm going to feed you spiritual food. I'm going to make sure you understand this word. Read. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Yes, go for, ahead. For even when we were with you, we, were command, we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Look at that. Look at that. So that's even talking about putting in this word of God. If the man going to stand up here and receive a pay out the pot, let him be teaching you something. The workman is worth his hire, but he got to be giving you something in return. Read. Verse 11. For we hear that there are some which walk um, among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy by mm. Don't let that be your job. Read. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. So look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. It's telling you, with quietness, you got to work and eat your own bread. But look, it said, now them that are such, now them that are busy bodies, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. So he's telling you, shut your mouth, mind your business. Don't be in everybody else's stuff. Read. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Uh -huh. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Mm. That's just something that you need to think about yourself. Something you need to, are, are you doing that? That's something you had to ask yourself. What we at, Al? Verse 15. Uh-huh. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So look at Al. Don't count him as an enemy. Don't just throw him in the trash. But you got to go and admonish him. And what do we say? That meant, let me find that definition again, warn, counsel. So we got to warn and counsel them with what? The word of God. Can't word, we can't counsel them with this, with our mind, with our thoughts, they're gonna be ready to black your eye. But we have to do it with love through the word of God. So now let's move forward. Let's go to 1 Samuel, the 25th chapter. 1 Samuel 25. We're gonna do a little read now. We're gonna read verses one through seven. 10 through 14, 18 to 28, 32 to 39. We're going to look at David, Nabal, 
and Abigail. 1 Samuel 25, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7 first. 1 through 7, 10 through 14, 18 to 28, 32 to 39. When you get it, my brother, please read. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down into the wilderness of Panaram. Mm -hmm. And there was a man in Mono whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Yes. Now the name of the man was Nabal. Now we're looking at Nabal. Go ahead. And the name of his wife, Abigail. And he had a wife named Abigail. Read. And she was a woman of good understanding uh -huh. and of a beautiful countenance. So look, that first line right there, brothers, even sisters, that should be the first thing that you're looking for in a man or looking for in a woman. One that has good understanding. Good understanding in what? In the word of God. So now you won't have no trouble. You won't be having trying to convert somebody. Ooh, he, he, that, he that second line with a beautiful countenance. So now, because he fine and he look good, I think I can change him. You can't change nobody that don't want to be changed. Like the old song said, you can't save him. You're only responsible for yourself. And here you will trying to change somebody else. You're going to find yourself falling off. So find you somebody with a good understanding in this word. Talk, start three over from the top. Go ahead, brother. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. So look at that. He was the opposite, opposite of what she was. Read. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. Uh -huh. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get ye up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. Yes. And thus shall ye say to him, that liveth in prosperity. Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. Yes. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy sh shepherds which were with us were we hurt not, we, we hurt them not, mm -hmm. neither was there aught missing unto them, all the, the while that they were in Carmel. Yes, so basically what they were saying was, was they protected the shepherds and they protected the sheep. They protect, they made sure everything was good. His men did, him, why they were there. Skip down to verse 10 and read. Read all of this story on your own if you hadn't read it. Skip down to verse 10 and read. And Nabal answered David's service and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? Mm, there be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. <laughs> Who is this dude here? I ain't never heard of him. Is he one of the ones that broke away? That just running off at the mouth? Read. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for, for my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So should I get this food, all this stuff that I got for my men and give it to somebody else I don't even know? Man, please, go ahead. So David's young men turned their way and went again, and came and told him all those things. And David said unto his men, Hold right there, Al. Let's show you Nabal, he was right. He didn't know who David was. David is a warrior. Y'all know some warriors? Some boy that love to scrap, that love to fight. That scrap, that's that old school word, that love to fight. Y'all know some, and David is the one. Read. 13 again. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword, 
and they girded on every man his sword, and David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men, and 200 abode by the stuff. So look at that. Look how many men he took. Just to deal with Nabal. We're going to make sure we take out. Let me let the book talk. Read. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. Mm -hmm. Abigail going to stand up. Skip down to verse 18 and read. Like I said, read the rest of this story on your own. Read. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on an ass. So look at, so think about this. It looked like Nabal had more than enough to feed David and his men. Abigail knew it, so she gathered this stuff up to try to save her house. And when I say her house, not just her and, uh, and Nabal, but everybody. Because they were coming through, he was going to kill everything that pisses on the wall. Read. And she said unto her servant, go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. And it was so. And she rode on that ass that she came down by the cover of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertaineth unto him. And he had requited me evil for good. Look at that. So we washed out after everything that this man had. Made sure nothing came to harm of, every, of, of his possessions while he was in the wilderness. And this man going to what? Give me evil for, for good? good? Read out. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertaineth to him by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall. So look what David said. David said, and so more also do God unto the enemies of David. So he know that God is the one that fights his enemies. But we're going to see something in this when we keep reading. Remember that statement right there. Then he said, he going to do what? Hey, I'll read the rest of that. All that what pertaineth to him and all morning? that pertaineth to him by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall. And when Abigail saw David, she hastened and lightened off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. Yes, sir. And fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. Look at that. So she's saying, Let me take this iniquity. Don't charge it to, the, to our house. I'm going to take upon, let me take upon this iniquity. Read. And let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Yes. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Baal, even Nabal. Look at that. She said this man, of, she already know her husband evil. Read. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. So Nabal means folly. He foolish. He is, a, he is a fool. What the book say? A fool in his mind shall soon depart. Read. But I, thy handmaid, saw not the young men my, of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Uh -huh. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholding thee from coming to shed blood and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. Go ahead. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. Yeah. So I look, she even, she didn't even went down to humble herself so much that she even called in David, my Lord. Read. 
I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. So look at that. Look how she's speaking of, of David. Read that again, Al. I pray thee, forgive the trespasses of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. So she's saying she gonna make David's house a sure house. And what? Because my Lord fight of the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Because she know David is a man of the Lord. He's a man of God. Skip down to verse 32 and read. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. Yes. And blessed be thy advice. And blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. For in, for in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hast hastened and kept and come to meet me, surely there had not been left any left unto Nabal by the morning light. Any Read that, that take that 34 from the top, my brother. For take in, your time. Take your time. For Go in ahead. for in every deed as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hast hastened and Come to me, to meet me. Yes. Surely there had not been left any. Have left, and left, not, not, left unto Nabal. Not left unto Nabal by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall. So he's saying that, hey, if you hadn't came and stopped me, I offer to take out everything that had the name Nabal on it. Anything he owned, no matter what it was, it was dying. Read, bro. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice and have accepted thy person. Go ahead. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk, drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing. Less or more until the morning light. Yeah, so Nabal throw the old feast and he feeling merry. Hmm. <laughs> so he didn't got that booze in him and he feeling good. Go ahead. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal and his wife had told him these things that his heart died within him and he became as a stone. Yes. And it came to pass about 10 days after that the Lord smote Nabal that he died. Who killed Nabal? The Lord. The Lord. So David, he said, vengeance is mine. I shall repay. David didn't have to raise a sword and raise a finger. Where we at, Al? 39. Read it. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and has kept his servant from evil. For so the look at that. Whoa, 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 whoa. And kept his servant from evil. He kept, his, he kept David from doing evil because vengeance is the Lord. Did we see anywhere where David consulted the Lord? That's what you're supposed to do. When you're about to do something, you're supposed to consult the Lord. But thank the Lord that Abigail stood in and kept him from committing an evil. Read it out. For the Lord have returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to, to him to wife. So now, because the law say, if your husband die, you can remarry. So that husband passed away. So now she can remarry. The Lord took him out. Let's keep going. We got two more. Psalms, the 106th chapter. Psalms 106, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to do a little reading here. Psalms 106, 
We're going to read verses 6 through 8, 12 through 14, 19, 27, 32, 41, 43, 48. Do some reading, fam. That's what we're supposed to do on the Sabbath. That's what Jesus did. He opened up the book and read. And he read what? Out of the book of what? Isaiah. He didn't read the book of John. He didn't read Timothy. Hebrews. Because that's the scriptures. That's the whole word of God right there. Psalms 106. Give me verse 6, my brother. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Keep going. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. So now, what we're reading here in this psalm, we're just getting a summary of what happened when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and how they provoked the Lord. Soon as they got what? To the Red Sea. It looked like even at the Red Sea, they were provoking the Lord. These are our people now. So I want you to just think about it. Let's take a look. Put your glasses on. Let's look. Read. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. So he even, nevertheless, through all the murmuring and the talking, he still saved them for his name's sake, Israel. Read. He rebuked the Red Sea also, uh -huh. and it was dried up. So he led them through the deeps. All right, I'll skip down to verse 12. They believe, then they, then they believe, then, then they, uh -uh. then believe they, his yes, words, they sung his praise. So now they believe his words. So that's, that's our MO. That's our MO right there to the T. We go through some drum. We want to serve the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, this, this, and that. Everything get a little better. We get going back to doing what we was doing, get in trouble again. Same praises to the Lord. Go right back to doing follow again. We're going to see it. Keep reading. Then soon forgot his works. Look at that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have to start that over from the top. They soon forgot his works. They soon forgot his works. They Go waited ahead. not for his counsel. So what did I, what did what we just talked about even with David? You have to seek the Lord's counsel. He is the best counselor that you can use. What we had at what verse? 14. Read it. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. Yes, sir. Uh, skip down to verse 19. They verse made, 19 to read. They made a calf in her and worshiped the molten image. So look at that. They even got Aaron and told Aaron and rushed Aaron to get Aaron to make them a god. Because we got to see something. I don't know what it is about us, but we about to see and attach something, people. Even old Down Thomas, what he said, I got to see the holes in his hand and touch him. To know that he got. We got to see something and feel it. That's just the type of people we is. We ain't going to believe it. If somebody just simply telling you, we got to see it. So we got to go through some drama in order to believe. What we at, Al? Verse 20. Read it. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. Wow. They changed the glory of God into an ox that eateth grass. Read. They forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said that he would destroy them had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath lest he should destroy them. So I want to follow back to verse 22 real quick. It said he did wonderful, wonderful works, works in the land of Ham. The land of Ham, if you don't know, that's the land that's called Africa right now. All of that land was given to Ham. You had Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And that land was given to Ham and his seeds. 
But then the Lord ended up giving us what? The Canaan's, that son, ended up giving us his land. That's the land that Abraham had, Isaac, and Jacob that was promised to them. And that's the land that's promised to us that we're not in right now. But if we simply fear God and keep the commandments, see, everything always falls back to the commandments. But let's keep going, Al. I'm sorry, where we at? That was the middle of 22. Okay, uh, we will read 22, 23, let's go. Wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. Uh -huh. Therefore, he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. So Moses was the intercessor at that time. The same way Jesus is our intercessor. That stands what? In the midst between us and the Father. And what? Plead our cause. Because he walked in his flesh. Read out. Yeah, they, displeased, they despised a pleasant land. They believed not his word but murmured in their tents and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Yes. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness. Go ahead. To overthrow their seed also among the nations and to scatter them in the lands. Yes, sir. Skip down to verse 32 and read. They angered him also at the waters of strife uh -huh. so that it went ill with Moses. Wait a minute. You see that? At the waters of strife that it even went ill with Moses. Because they called Moses to what? The Lord told them to speak to the rock. But Moses smoked the rock. Ye rebels, that's not his place. He got out of place. But we can provoke you to anger to make you get out of place. Think about Moses, the intercessor, the man that God spoke to directly. What do you say he spoke to Moses what? Mouth to mouth. If he was provoked to anger, then what? By Israel, by the people. Something we got to think about. Read. I'm going to start at the top of 32 again. Uh -huh. They angered him also at the waters of strife. Yes. So that it went ill with Moses for their sakes. Uh -huh. Because they provoked his spirit so that he spoke unadvisedly with his lips. Look at that. Read. They did not destroy they did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, uh -huh. but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. So the Lord told them, the Amorites, the Jebusites, all of those people that he named, he told them to destroy them down to the ground. But what we did, we made league with some of them folk. Man, you know what? They got up. They got the PlayStation 4. They got this. They got that. Da, 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 da. We got to be friends with people that the Lord tell you not to be friends with. He told you to destroy them down to the ground because he knew they was going to be what? A thorn in your side. So since you want the thorn in your side, I'm going to let you have it. Read. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Look at that. There it is. Go ahead. Yeah, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Yes. And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with so, blood. So those people that he told you to destroy and get out the land, that's why he told you to, because he knew you was going to pick up their gods. He is a god that's sitting out a statue with a bull head on it, and he got his hands out in the fire. And they light that fire, and that whole statue turned red hot. And there you were sacrificing your children. Because you see those people doing that in that land. Come on. Where we at, Al? 39. Read it. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring after their own inventions. Yes. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people insomuch that he abhorred their own inheritance. Wow. Read that, Al. And he gave... Read that one again. Uh-uh. 41. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. So think about it. He said he's going to provoke you with, a, with, a pe with people that wasn't a people. He's going to provoke you to jealousy. So that's what they just said. He gave you over to the hand of a people because you don't want to what? Obey me. So now, here you is, the, the, the first ten got scouted. And Levi came back. So now you got Levi, Benjamin, and Judah. 
They still didn't follow the Lord. They keep the Sabbath day. You stay in the land. No. Can't do that. Gotta serve these other gods. So now what? You get scattered in the all four corners of the world. We know it as the what? Transatlantic slave trade. You everywhere. You own the bottom. You go to China. You might say, I don't see nothing in China. Find the lowest of the low places in China. You're going to find us there. We everywhere. You can put it in Google if you don't believe it. It'll tell you about the black Chinamen. We everywhere. Where we at, Al? 42. Go to 43. Skip down to verse 43 and read. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Go ahead. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry, and he remembered for them his covenant. Do y'all see that right there? What kind of God we got? All of that they did is say, nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when they heard, when he heard their cry. So think about this. When you get mad at your child and he done done something to you, and you may have spanked his tail and whooped him, and he ended up just crying and crying and crying. It's killing you on the inside, because that's your baby. But I got to punish him. I can't let him just get away with it. I got to punish him, because if I don't, he going to continue to think it's OK. It's the same thing God do to us. I got to whoop that tail. Maybe he'll straighten up. What we had to have? 45. Read it. And he remembered for them his covenant and repented according to the multitude of his mercy. Yes, sir. Go ahead. He made them also to be pitted of all those that carried them captive. Yes, sir. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. Yeah, so we're looking at a little future right here. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say amen. Yes, Praise sir. ye the Lord. Yes, sir. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. Because that's what's going to happen. He scattered us. He going to gather us. Let's go to our last place. Let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews 10. And we're going to read verses 23 to 25. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And we're going to read words 23 to 25. So we got to remember that he is going to gather us. So we got to hold strong. Let's let the book talk, Jeff. <laughs> Hebrews 10. Give me verse. Give me 22, Al. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Yes, sir. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Go ahead. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So that's the provoking we need to be doing, to provoke unto love, unto good works. So we need to be showing our neighbor, our brothers, our sister, love. Finish it off, Al, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So we can't forsake the assembly of ourselves. We need to have a holy convocation come to class, watching us on Facebook, watching us on YouTube, uh, Twitter, X, whatever it is, it's not going to get it. Come to class. You forsaken the assembly. Take that from the top, Al. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Yes, sir. So we can't forsake the assembly, family. We must be here on the Lord's, the Lord's, the Lord's Sabbath day. So with that said, that concludes this lesson. I hope somebody got something out of it. Thank you for your time.
Thank you.